Hey everybody, it's Norm Ferrar, aka The Beard Guy here, and welcome to another Lunch with Norm, The Rise of the Microbrands. Lunch with Norm. Well, it's Helium 10 week. I thought I'd wear my Helium 10 swag. Uh, today, we're going to be having director of training and host of the Serious Seller podcast, Bradley Sutton. So we're going to be diving deep into keyword research, the do's, the don'ts, and everything in between. So Kelsey, where are you, sir? Hello. How? Are, what is that you're wearing? It's, it's my fluffy sweater. It's uh, freezing here. We had some issues, uh, again, at the apartment, but uh, we got around it, you know, we adapted, and now I got this nice, nice sweater. So well, if, you, if you came back home once in a while, you could stay over here, and you wouldn't have to wear that. Yeah, that's next weekend. We're toasty warm here. Yeah, I know. yeah. <laughs> that's next weekend. Okay. <laughs> All right. Are we doing a podcast when you're back here? Uh, Same room? Like, Same room? I, I that would be should. cool. There we yeah. go. All right. All right. So, so what are we going to do? Are you going to do your job today? Are we going to be yes. liking or smashing or what is that? Smashing? No, liking the smashes. What were you like saying last smashes. time? Yeah, I don't even want to go back to. You don't want to think about that? Ones. Okay. What are, what are people supposed to do? Uh, okay. Smash those like buttons. Uh, get the word out about this podcast. Take your friends. We've got an awesome giveaway today. Um, I think you guys are going to really like this one. It's, uh, yeah. Um, but before that, Head over to the Amazon or the Lunch with Norm Facebook group. That is Lunch with Norm, Amazon FBA and e commerce collective. That's where all the fun stuff is. And uh, yeah, if you're looking for highlights, anything, uh, full episodes, go over to our YouTube page. Uh, it's Norman Ferrar. That's where everything is. Uh, yes, Marina, I'm very cozy. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think that's pretty much it, except uh, the clubhouse. We have our weekly clubhouse on Mondays at 1 30 p.m. Eastern time. So go head over there um, on Mondays. Uh, the event tab is available in the Facebook group right now. So uh, the link is there. You can RSVP if you want, if you don't want to forget about it. But um, yeah, I think that's it. Okay. So I think it's going to be a real awesome podcast. So if you do know any other people that want to uh, listen to about keyword research, the do's and the don'ts, you know, please tag them, get them in. And um also, by the way, if you tag two people, you'll be entered it twice into our giveaway today. And we'll get into that in a second. But sit back, relax, grab that cup of coffee, enjoy the show. Welcome, Mr. Sutton. Hello, hello, hello. How are you, sir? I'm doing just delightful. How's oh, that's it going? good. Well, I, I, you know, I thought you were going to start, you know, jiving and zumbaing to the the song uh I, that that's a really cool intro uh you have there i love it you do uh, oh yep. great I like it. <laughs> hey in case people don't know you can you give us a little bit uh well you know a little bit of background about what you're doing and what you're doing over at helium 10. yeah so um my, my position changes you know sometimes that's that's the one cool thing about helium 10 they, they allow you to kind of grow into into different roles but uh currently it's di director of training and chief evangelist no it doesn't have anything to do uh with religion even though that's what usually people think about uh evangelist but uh did you do, do you know the origin of that term norm i do not what is it so i guess um uh, guy kawasaki who I mean, worked for apple for a while he was the first one to kind of mainstream that and it's kind of like it, it, it's a you know something like it's not necessarily brand ambassador but it's like you know when you're out there doing podcasts or something or or you know just trying to get the word out there about your company um you know whether it's through the printed word or whether through its video or audio then you're kind of like evangelizing for your brand so that's what like he was the first mainstream person to to have that you know title he even wrote a book uh, all about it it's, it's on audible I, I listened to it. it's pretty interesting but um, that that's that's the that's the uh, origin of it. So even you you know you know Karen Thomas uh, here, and of course sure. Marcus, uh, yep. Marcus who is always next to you as a uh, 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 beard a uh, luxury level or how luxurious the beard is. But um, but they're both now brand evangelists as well here. So I was like at first when they they told me that I was like evangelist. I was like, well, what in the world? <laughs> I'm like that's weird. But um, but now 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 I guess it makes sense. But anyways, yeah, that's that's my position here and. I do the training videos and um, I run all the the case studies and um, and yeah, you know, I've worked here. It's, it's hard to believe it's coming up on, on three years before then I was uh, 
uh, consultant for Amazon sellers. So I was on the other side uh, of the aisle here and um, launched over 400 products. And um, yeah, just been in this Amazon space, not as long as m some, you know, about six, seven years now, but um, I love it. I, I don't see myself ever getting out of this uh, uh, this space. Yeah, I was, wa <laughs> this is gonna I was watching Wicked Tuna <laughs> the other night. <laughs> You know, something to do. And the, the complaining and, you know, oh, like a horrible season. And it, it just kind of, you know, I, I thought about the world in general and how awful it is that people were losing jobs, people going bankrupt. And, you know, sometimes you feel really guilty because over the last year, you know, a lot of Amazon sellers or e-com uh, sellers or service providers have exploded, you know, in a good way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not, the, the one big thing I think you see in 2020 and 2021 that I don't I don't know if anybody could have predicted. You know, th there are some things that you can kind of predict, like, uh, you know, when COVID started and, and everybody started buying online, you could probably say, oh, man, there might be some inventory restrictions because Amazon warehouses are going to be full. Or, or, or you might have been able to predict that, you know, things that you do at home are, are, are going to are going to boom or. Or there's going to be more third-party sellers. You know, you can make easy predictions like that. But the one thing that has really struck me is 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 the aggregators, you know, like Thrasio and and Perch and and things like that. It's like they're like taking over the world. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. That's a that's an amazing thing. It, it makes so much sense. But it's like that just seemed to come out of nowhere. You know, like mm -hmm. in 2018, you, you heard about oh, you know, maybe I'll I'll sell my bread. I remember the big news was like 2019 maybe or 2018. It was um. Oh, it was a supplement company, Zhao Nutrition. And uh, it was like big news. Uh, Zhao Nutrition sold for $20 million. And that was just like, like everybody was just like shocked. And I was like, whoa, that's so amazing. They were just like a third party seller. But now that's, you know, transactions like that are happening, you know, every day of the week, you know, yeah. at, at some of this company. So I, I think that's, that that's something that, really, that, that, that seems to be big news now. I remember, oh, I don't know if it was 2013, around that time. There was a debate going on whether um, Amazon stores or brands through Amazon would even sell. Yeah, you know there were there were people back then looking at flipping their business, but they're getting nothing. You know, it, it wasn't that great. But now you take a look at it. If you do it right and you uh, you optimize your listing properly, you optimize your business properly, man, you can make a ton of cash fairly yeah. quickly. You know that, and that's the thing about that's another reason why I love the the world that I'm in is that you know you don't have to wait ten years. Um, you can start on Amazon or an e-commerce platform, and you know you get out in eighteen months, you know maybe twenty four months, but still sure. in two years go from zero to nothing. You know, that that's fantastic. But today we have a special giveaway that you don't do. You never do this. Well, if you do, it's very rare because I've never heard you do this. Mm -hmm. The giveaway today, why don't you announce it? Yeah, so um, we're going to do a special giveaway. We don't even uh, give this out you know, when we do webinars hardly. Um, actually, I don't think we've ever done this on a webinar. But we're going to give away a one-on-one -on -one consultation with with me. You know, I, I like, I, I like uh, meeting with people, but um, sometimes when it's like in group settings, you know, like whether it's at a conference or even just on a group Zoom, you know, people are kind of reluctant to really – talk about what they're doing or show their product or things. But in a one-on-one -on -one setting, you can, you know, I'm not going to share your stuff. You know, we're not going to broadcast it live. So we're going to give away a one-on-one -on -one session with me. And then you can feel free to talk about anything, uh, anything you want. I'll look at your listing. I'll look at your product idea. I'll, I'll give you my sourcing agent. I mean, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll no holds barred. Perfect. Only for you, Norm. That sounds fantastic. So guess what the hashtag is going to be? I love Bradley. Hashtag I love Bradley. <laughs> and you oh, wanted God. I want, I know, but I'm gonna throw I love Bradley in there. Anyways, feel free. Hashtag if you want to just say I want Bradley, I understand. But <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm sure we're gonna get a ton of people looking at that because again, um, when you mentioned that, I thought that was really special. Thank you very much. And if you take uh, what was it, two people? Yep, you get an extra. People, you get an extra vote too. So yeah, very good. All right, let's dig into this. This is a first for me. I get to talk to you. Usually, it's the other way around. So uh, this is kind of cool. 
All right, so we're going to be talking about uh, keyword research and kind of, you know, digging into it and the do's and the don'ts and like I said, everything in between. So why don't we talk about just general keyword research right now? What would you recommend? What's your style of keyword research? Yeah. So, you know, it's important that people understand the what they're doing before they, they get into keyword research or what's the point of what they're doing. This has nothing to do with Helium 10 or, or any software tool. It's just a conceptual thing. I mean, because tools like, you know, Cerebro and Helium 10 didn't even exist, you know, three, four years ago. Uh, it's not like people didn't do keyword research, you know, eight years ago, no tools listed. People are still figuring out what keywords to put in their listing. So it's get, you got to understand the concept. And the concept is at the end of the day, uh, and this is my big thing. I especially focus on last year in, in trains is people need to understand that the buy of uh, the buying process on on Amazon. So like you, you normally do you do, you buy, do you buy things up there uh, on Amazon or do you have other websites you use or what do you use for to buy product to buy products? Yeah, as a consumer. Oh, I, probably 90 percent Amazon. OK, so do you remember any of the last things that you uh, they you just bought? arrived? I bought your mic. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, the, the Nano uh, or I, the, the Yeti. Uh, oh no! I oh, oh I thought sh- that was oh, a sure. Oh, the sure, yeah, the sure, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So that I just there, just and, and the camera looks like a yeti right there. Which it is, is a yeti. Way. I'm okay. replacing it. Kelsey's getting this. I'm getting cool. the sure. <laughs> oh, you know, yeah. Are you sure about? No, I'm, I'm sorry, pretty no. sure. <laughs> um, so you know what? It, it, you actually bring up a good point. One of the last things, uh, you know, a few months ago, I bought too was a microphone, and so the whole buying process for you, you a need comes up. So for you, your need was. You know what? You know, my microphone sounds good, but I think it can sound a little bit better. Or I have FOMO because I see everybody has these sure microphones or whatever it was. There was a need that came up uh, in your mind. And no matter if you know the exact brand or the exact product that you want or you're not sure. um, An image comes up in your mind of what you think it might look like, you know, how much uh, how much it might cost, you know, what the functions are. These things all come up in your head when you have a need. And then when it's time to go buy it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't matter if you knew the name of the product or not. You have to translate that need or that image in your head into a keyword. Now, sometimes if it's an exact microphone like the Shure, you're going to type in S H U R E microphone. It's a keyword. But maybe you don't know. Maybe it's best uh, microphone for podcasting. All right. Uh, whatever, whatever it is, you know, we're not at the uh, technology level yet where we can just transfer some image in our head <laughs> into a, a Amazon search. So no matter what, you have got to translate your need into a keyword. And the important thing is that everybody's different. You know, you could have one product and you could have 100 people and and there might be at least 50 to 75 different ways that people are going to describe that product to search for it. So at the end of the day, if you can take nothing else from this uh, episode here is just remember the the purpose of keyword research is you are trying to identify all of the potential keywords that your target audience could possibly use to look for and buy a, uh, your product. And 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 a mistake that a lot of Amazon sellers make is is they think they know their their product really well, and you should know your product really well, but they just rely on their own. You know their their own knowledge. Like, all right, this microphone is, is going to be podcast mic, and and maybe some people might might uh you know call this expensive podcast mic or, or something like that. And, and then they just rely on their own knowledge. But they, they 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 you have to understand that the majority of people probably don't search like you. You know, if you think you're a professional searcher, great. But I guarantee there's people who use very strange terms. Mm-hmm. You know, even other language terms. And so that's the goal of keyword research. Is hey. What are all the possible ways that somebody could be desc- who who would be looking for a product like mine would use to describe it? Because I got to get those in my listing so that I can at least show up in the search results. So how do you get to that point? So uh, like, f- for example, bully sticks. I know bully sticks. I thought I knew bully sticks like, you know, the back of my hand. And then uh, for me, I started looking at competitors. And I, I actually extracted this from using a Helium 10 tool, um, Cebro. Pizzle. What the heck's a pizzle? But it's another name for bully stick. And it turned out to be really great. Watch. Kevin King's going to be doing, and he's going to hear this. <laughs> but we, we both sell bully sticks. But anyways, pizzle turned out to be a really great keyword for us. Not a ton of sales, 
but we were able to extract those sales that nobody else was targeting. It was no competitors on it. Pizzle. Who would have thought? Yeah. Yeah. So, and there, there's always things like that, uh, that happen. So, and then even, even you do the best keyword research, it's not the end of the day, you know, uh, keyword research is an ongoing thing. Your PPC, if you have auto and broad campaigns going, those are going to discover even other keywords that you're like, this, this has nothing, you know, let me know in the comments, guys, how many of you guys have, have you, know, you've been selling on Amazon for a while and you take a look at your auto campaign search reports and you're looking at keywords that you actually got conversions for. Not only did you get an impression for, but you know, somebody saw that they clicked on, they bought it and you're like, what in the world? Why in the world would somebody buy my product after searching, you know, for this, but that that's the that's the beauty, and then so later on, it's like okay, well, maybe I need to put that keyword in my listing to to even optimize further for it. Without using the app, how do you do competitive analysis to find these different keywords? Well, th there's different ways, you know. Th there's different ways. So um, the the first the first way, you know, like let's say somebody didn't have Helium Ten or any other tool, is you know the way that people did it back in the day is is they would just start you know type. You could probably know what the main keyword is, or at least mm -hmm. the, the root word is, almost always. So people who don't have tools, you know, use people would just use the autocomplete. You know, they could use the autocomplete there on Amazon. And something new that has come up again that doesn't require the use of a tool is you type in the main keywords, you know, like coffin shelf uh, on on Amazon. You scroll all the way to the bottom, and and that usually is better than autocomplete. It gives you like five related keywords. You know that according to whatever Amazon is using for their algorithm, it's these are like you know the keywords that if somebody searched coffin shelf, either they before this or after this, they also search these other keywords. You know, and and there's stuff that doesn't come up in autocomplete because there's sometimes completely different words. If you type in coffin shelf, the only things that come up in autocomplete are the stuff that start with like coffin shelf. But if you go all the way to the bottom, you'll see like gothic decor or or, or things like that 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 would never come up in autocomplete. So that's a great way to get uh, some uh, some good keywords. Another thing that you could do if you're not using a tool is if you have brand registry, and I highly suggest to everybody, um, even if they're just getting started, unless you're, unless you're just looking for the next fad like fidget spinner or something like that, well, maybe you don't need brand analytics, but uh, I would always suggest getting brand registry so you can get brand analytics because you can at least see uh, you know, for your competitors uh, which ones that they're dominating the clicks on and if they're getting purchases from there. So that's another great way. Um, for me personally, I, I launched I launched uh, 40 products last year as case studies, um, and and a lot of these products I have a unique way of doing product research, and and I, I kind of go against the the norm, no pun intended. But I I what I do is I like getting into niches like the coffin shelf, where there is zero competition, like uh, and that's you know my ceiling is kind of capped because you know these things are selling like five six seven units per day, but for me. It's a great sandbox for doing my case studies because uh, I'm able to just almost do whatever I <laughs> whatever I want there because there's no competition. So um, the way that I get my ideas is from Etsy and Pinterest a lot. Okay, so, usually, so you're talking about your Project X. Project correct? X is one, but that's just yeah. two products. Um, I did another 35 products last year using the same methodology from hmm. Project X. Yeah, yeah, where, where we find stuff that's trending off of Amazon. And so if you find something that's trending on Etsy and that's what you're going through, by definition, using this method, I can't use Helium 10, you know, for my keyword research because there's no competition on Amazon that exists. Sure, I can look at the search volume and, it, and you know, I, I do look at the search volume and things like that there. But as far as what are the keywords that drive sales? Well, your number one way of knowing that you don't have because you can't look at any competitors, whether you're talking brand analytics or Helium 10 to see. So this is what I do. If they're selling well on Etsy, all I need is one or two or three. Um, I go on the Etsy and, and there's this little trick I use to see what are the, the popular products. I first can click on their sales. Uh, you know, not everybody on Etsy knows how to hide this. Like more than 50% of sellers on Etsy don't even know that all of their sales are exposed to the world. Uh, it's really? like a, a certain feature. Yeah, it's a certain feature that you have to use to hide it. So like, for example, if you guys go to the Project X uh, Etsy store, you know, type in how cool is that? I think that's what it, it, it's under or coffin shelf and, and find our coffin shelf. And then you see our store name is how cool is that? You click on the store name. And once you get to our storefront, everybody has this. It, it says number of sales. Now, what everybody doesn't have is the ability to click on it. So we, we left it open. We don't care if people see how many sales we're making. But 
most sellers are like that. They don't even know that they can turn that off. But if you click on that, that is a real time tally of every single one of that Etsy store sales since the beginning of time. So you keep like be following that every day and know which products that they're selling. So anyways, you'll know if this is a hot selling product. You know, there's obviously no X-ray helium 10 X-ray yet for for Etsy. So that's like a way to, to know the sale. So then you, you look at that. What's the, the, the popular product? And then when you look, click on the page, of course, you know, look at their title, just things like you would do on Amazon. What, what's the main keyword they're doing there? But if you scroll to the bottom of the page, there's this thing that says related keywords. And a lot of people are under the mistaken assumption that that's like some Etsy algorithm or something kind of like similar to Amazon at the bottom of the search page where it gives other other words. No, those are the words that the Etsy seller has highlighted as the most important words to their listing. In the back end of an Etsy listing, it asks them to put their most important tags, right? So it's kind of like the search terms in an Amazon listing, you know, that, that nobody would ever see. But you can actually say, all right, here are the 12 keywords that this Etsy seller has tagged as their most important keywords. And so, boom, there, there, there's, there's a good starting point there. So all of this, guys, without the use of Helium 10 or, or any tool, just stuff that any, anybody can do right now. That's crazy. I, I had no idea about that. I do know that a lot of people are having success with Etsy right now. But uh, another, uh, just a quick tip on the autofill. One of the things that I, I know that we we do is that before we start typing, we hit the space bar and then type in the name and then it'll, you'll have a bunch of long tails that come down, mm -hmm. which, which you know helps us out when we're doing long tail um, rebates or if we're doing some sort of giveaway or as, uh, search find buy. Okay, so let's talk about mistakes. Sure. What what are people doing that are causing them to uh, either lose sales or just basic mistakes? Mistakes, I mean, some people might think these are just boneheaded or simple, but I mean, I've seen experienced sellers do it. So so again, the, the, the one thing we already mentioned is making sure that, you know, you're not just using, relying on your own knowledge to, to, to put keywords. The other thing is you might have the best keyword research ever, and then you don't you don't actually put them in your listing, you know. So like, mm. like what in the world are you like? You did yeah. all this research, and then you just uh, what assume that Amazon is going to index you for this keyword, you know? <clears throat> Another mistake that some people do is is not putting their most important keywords in phrase form, and, and the most important keywords usually is not that many. You know, you'll get a good eighty percent of your sales, if not more, from like 10, 15 keywords. Now you still don't want to neglect all the other hundreds of, of potential keywords, but but the big majority of your sales is going to come from a core number of, of keywords. And it's important to have those in phrase form because when you first start your listing, it's going to help you <clears throat> once you get interaction with those keywords, you're going to get be able to rank a lot faster for it as opposed to if if Amazon's just piecing together these phrases from different parts in your listing. You know, like like if, if the uh, the words is hydrolyzed collagen peptides. You know, you, you got collagen in your title, hydrolyzing your bullet points and and peptides in your description. Sure, you'll you'll be indexed for it, but Amazon might not view you view you as very relevant because that, that keyword's not in, in phrase form. So that's important. Another 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 thing that, that people uh make a mistake on it is they think keyword research stops once your listing is live. Like I'm mm. good. I'm good. You know, a perfect example of this I saw was was this trending product, and and I think it actually might have turned out to be an adult product, but whatever it was, it was something that just got invented like three years ago, right? So at the time, they did what they were supposed to do, and they looked at their initial keyword research, and the number one keyword was blank, blank, whatever this product was. If I remember the word, I probably couldn't even say it out loud, but uh, <laughs> blank, blank for beginners. It was something like, you know, 15,000 keyword, and then there's just the core keyword, the blank, blank part was you know, like 5,000 because it was some new trend or something, right? So so they did that and then they kept going and then they, they came to me a year later, like, man, my sales keep going down and down and down. I was like, well, have you have you looked at, you know, the keywords? Uh, because things things change as far as trends. And and they said, no. So when we looked at it again, that that blank blank for beginners was, was now only like maybe 2,000 search volume. And then all these other keywords ha had uh, come up, like the main keyword, now, all of a sudden, that was the number one one. And then the, the, there's these new ways that people were using this product and these develop or these uh, made other keywords. And then those were all had search volume. Some of those they didn't even have in their listing. So, you know, I'm not saying, hey, guys, do keyword research every single week and, and redo your listing. No, you actually shouldn't do that. That's going to mess up your 
your listing. Sometimes that that screws up the Amazon algorithm. But you know, every, every few months, you know, do do a deep dive into your keyword research. Look at what you're converting for. Look at what your competitors are converting for. And I guarantee every single time you do that, there's probably going to be a couple keywords that you didn't even realize were relevant to your listing that maybe have just popped up. And then yeah, go ahead and uh, you know stick those in your listing. Just make sure when you do that, you're not taking away things that um that are important for your your listing like maybe your number one keyword is 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 coffin shelf and like ah, i'm gonna take that off and replace it with a uh, gothic decor or something you know you don't want to de-index you uh for anything but but definitely add uh keywords down the line that uh that are relevant for your listing don't make that mistake that other sellers do where they think oh the journey's over you know once my listing's live so i've got to ask you about uh setting up your listing so i've heard everything uh 20 30 different styles of setting up your listing but uh, i've heard recently that never repeat a keyword now i heard this in the past i'm hearing it a lot more now short titles shorter bullets relevant keywords in the search terms never repeat uh, for uh, uh, a keyword and your main keyword phrase would be uh, in your title, of course. Mm -hmm. But then I've heard people say, and this is the way it was for the last two years, is repeat the different keyword phrases. You know, have different keyword phrases throughout your listing, throughout the back end, in subject matter, which is now taken away for most categories. Mm -hmm. um, what, what do you suggest? What have you seen? I, I still think, uh, at least in the beginning, you should repeat. Um, the main those main phrases because again in that the first couple of months of a listing you're you're fighting uh, with the algorithm to to try and make sure that they know you're relevant for it and so I mean just naturally keywords are going to be repeated I mean if you have a collagen peptides listing it's impossible to only have collagen peptides in your listing once I mean your listing is going to look pretty weird if it's only there once it's just natural you know that that hey you know collagen peptides is in the title and then down here is like you know our collagen peptides comes from uh, pasteurized, whatever, cows, whatever the heck. I mean, it would be weird if you didn't have collagen peptides more than once. So that's not necessarily a bad thing. Now, what happens is, like, I think at the as the listing matures, um, you don't have to have it repeated. Because if you're already ranking on the, on the top of page one, theoretically speaking, you know, you remove one of them, it's not going to make a big deal. Um, Amazon gives conflicting information and that's why people get confused. You know, like if anybody has brand analytics and uh, I'm sorry, brand registry and you look, you, you have access to this feature called um, uh, search term optimization. Uh, and that's like something that, that you can control your backend search terms uh, from your brand uh, registry dashboard. And it's actually interesting. First of all, let, let's, let's, there's just a side note. If anybody has brand registry, use that to do, your uh, search terms because you get about 40 more characters because in in the regular listing you only get up to what so 249 or 250 characters you can do but in that part of of editing it it doesn't count the spaces so on average you'll get another 40 to 50 characters of real estate that you can put into your um search terms nice but what that actually will tell you is like hey don't put this keyword here because you've already got it somewhere else in your listing now again I say ignore that in the beginning, but later on, if you did have those duplicates, you, you can probably go ahead and remove it from the search terms, just like it's telling you. But you know, even now, you know, if you were to to message, uh, I, I I even tested this a couple months ago, where where um, it took me a few times to get a, a rep to say it, but they still say it. Some of them where I was, uh, I had a keyword in my listing, and, and it wasn't really not even in the top seven pages, wasn't ranking at all, and I just you know I opened up a case and I'm like, hey, you know, I'm not. I'm not really showing up for this keyword. I know I'm indexed for it. Is what advice can you give me? And and they'll say, uh, do you have it in your search terms? And and I said no. And they'll say, go ahead and add it there. And, I mean, they knew I had it in the rest of my listing, but they're like, go ahead and add it. In other words, duplicate that keyword. And, and then sure enough, it, it, it put me to like page uh, page six or, or page seven. You know, I'm not going to get any sales from it, but it just shows algorithmically that Amazon still looks at at sometimes duplication for whatever relevancy thing that that they're doing. So um, I, I I would say yes, duplicate, especially in the beginning, but as the listing gets older, it does not become as critical for you to do that. Very good. Hey, guys, if you're liking what you're hearing, please, like Kelsey says, like the smashes. 
<laughs> you know, hit the subscribe, invite people over. And I, I just wanted to, uh, again, just uh, let you know what the giveaway is today. Uh, Bradley is going to be doing a one-on-one -on -one session, which he doesn't do. So it's one-on-one. -on -one. If you like what you're hearing, it's hashtag I love Bradley. Or uh, if you get a, oh, what is this? If you get a, you'll get a second vote if you tag two more people. How's that? All right. And now, did I say that okay, Kels? You did. That was, I, I also just threw in another thing. If you share the video out, you'll get another two votes. We're, we're feeling generous there you, today. So. Oh, there you go. All right. All on, uh, all on Bradley's time. <laughs> Okay, uh, now let's go back to some of the questions. Uh, I've seen a few coming through here. Kels, can you start throwing up some? Yeah, so the first one is from Dr. Cause. Is it yep. true uh, less keywords on the back end of an Amazon listing would have more weight? I heard more often uh, not to jam pack the keywords. Any thoughts? Um, I haven't tested that recently. I mean, to me, uh, it's always been in this, this information, like what, a year and a half ago, actually leaked out of Amazon where the search terms is second most important uh, to the title. So, um, but if I have only 50 keywords in there as opposed to 250, like, does it have more weight? That's an interesting um, case study. I've never seen anything out of Amazon or anything in my own studies that that say one way. I, I try when possible to, to maximize it just because that, that real estate is so valuable and it's not like... It's not too much. Remember, remember that Norm remembers the days where oh. you even open up to 5,000 5, yeah. characters you could do back there. Uh, but yeah, that, that'd be something to interest, but uh, or something interesting to test. But for now, I, I try and max it out. You know, based on that, what about uh, the bullet points? Are you keeping to smaller bullet points with just more user engagement or benefit feature and just very short? Or are you writing those 500 characters? I'm, I, I never do the 500 characters, and and, and the reason is, is um, is it, to me that's not attractive. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm looking as a buyer, and, and that's one thing again. That there's talking about the mistakes that Amazon sellers make, is that people sometimes think too much like sellers and not like buyers, and they think about oh algorithm and indexing and relevancy and all this stuff, and they're like yeah I gotta put as much as possible because it'll get me great juice. But at the end of the day, it's not the Amazon algorithm that's buying your product. It's a it's a normal person. And if I see a listing where there's like seven bullet points and each one has five, I'm like, okay, you know what? This is too much to, to, to deal with. Let me go to the next listing. That, that's like not attractive to me. So that's the reason why I don't do, you know, 500 in, in the bullet points. Now, back in the days, uh, you know, they used to cap it at, I think it was like a thousand. So like uh, you, you could go more than a thousand in the bullet points, but for indexing, sometimes if you go more than a thousand, they wouldn't index you. Now, I think that has changed. I haven't, that's another thing I haven't tested, but Oh, as you mentioned, subject matter started going away for a lot of categories. And in a lot of those categories that subject matter went away, you got added extra bullet points or, or like the ability to do up to like 10, 12 bullet points. Yeah. And so in my opinion, I can't imagine that they still would have a 1000 character cap on indexing on the bullet points because, you know, those are like 75 character <laughs> bullet points, you know, if, if that was the case. So um for me it's kind of like what uh, i i go by what tomer rabinovich uh have you ever had him on on the show oh yeah 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 He's tomer great. he teaches something called um you know a neat looking at the niche theme and, and that's like look at what the others in your niche are uh the bet the successful ones look at the structure of their listing do they have long titles you should go ahead and do a long title it obviously works do they have short titles do a short title because that's what seems to be more attractive to people same thing with the bullet points. Do they have long bullet points? You know, do they have uh, short bullet points? Do they do they only have three bullet points? Do they have eight? You know, go with what is already proven to work in your niche and proven to be okay to your target market. And that, that's that's kind of like how I go about it as opposed to targeting just without looking at that, just like some exact number of 300 characters or 100. Great point. All right, Kels. <laughs> just give me a second. Sure. A lot of questions coming through. Okay, uh, from Jeffrey Anderson. Uh, Bradley, do you know of a list of restricted keywords not allowed to be used in the listing? Yeah, that's a great question, but the, the short answer is no. Um, Amazon, unfortunately, hasn't published it. I mean, you, you kind of know it's like drug-related keywords and you know some swear words and, and uh, things like that, but I wish that Amazon would publish um, a full list. Uh, another thing that people don't realize is branded keywords as well are kind of forbidding keywords for if you don't have that brand you know like i uh 
I, I talked a seller two years ago, put the word um, farts, fart or something like that in the listing. That's actually a branded term. And he got his listing suppressed for it. Like, hmm, what? Somebody has that trademarked or, or uh, uh, you know, somebody trademarked the word fart. But sure enough, they did. So if you use a trademark, it doesn't even have to, I say branded. It doesn't even have to be a brand. Obviously, all brands are almost all trademarked. But just if somebody trademarked a, a word, like, who knows, you know, uh, isn't LeBron James trying to t trademark Tacos Tuesday or something? Like, <laughs> it, if, if that goes through, theoretically speaking, then if somebody sees a Tacos Tuesday in an Amazon listing that that, that uh, uh, trademark owner can can go and, and report that to Amazon, you could get removed. So just 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 drug related keywords, you know, cuss cuss words, um, and and trademark terms. Just try and stay away from those. But unfortunately, Amazon hasn't done a list because that actually that's thousands of keywords. You know. Yeah, and, and there's also we we've run into this a lot with um, free. So non instead of free, uh, the 100%, the guarantee, the satisfaction. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, there's certain things that um, Amazon will just slap you with and the anti, 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 anti. So we've been going with my clients. We've been going through, uh, it's been crazy with antibacterial, anti this, anything that is yep. that yep. could look like it's PPE related. Uh, they're getting suppressed, suspended. But um, anyways, yeah, I, I, I agree. I wish that we could get something like that. And so also, did, but, then, then we'd build that into the tool. And then yeah. we'd be able oh, to, there you go. We'd but be able to like give you a notice like, hey, be careful. You know, one of the things you can do, it's not going to tell you, you know, right off the bat, but one of the things that you can do to help improve your um, your ability to have the uh, listing up is uh, check out the style guide. Style guide is, you know, going to let you know at least, mm -hmm. like I see a lot of people breaking a lot of rules and it's all just minor things, but you know, what does that, how does that weigh against, you know, the guy that if two people have the exact same listing and one listing is doing a bunch of minor, uh, TOS issues, I don't know about you, but logically I would think the other listing would be promoted before the other one that's breaking minor TOS issues. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure about that, but anyways. Okay, Kels, next. Okay, next one we have from Simon. Let's say those 75 keywords from those 100 people are being used by 100 sellers. How does Amazon decide who wins? All right, so 75 keywords from those 100 people are being used by, I mean, are we? if we're just talking about, uh, you know, there's 100 uh, sellers who, who are using the 75 same, same keywords and if you mean that by amazon winning is who who or by who amazon picks to win is who's you know ranking towards the top or if you're talking about ppc um you know those are different subjects but let's just assume that you're talking about like or, hey who who are who's amazon going to prioritize in search results if everybody has the same keyword well it, it's who has more interactions you know on your listing from that keyword you know, and we're not only talking about purchases. I mean, Amazon, I mean, of course, purchases are the most important, but but there are so many different factors. I mean, Amazon's even looking at things like, all right, somebody searched for this keyword and they clicked on this listing and they spent a lot of time on this page. Maybe they didn't even buy, but Amazon is actually reading, you know, that 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 kind of data. So it's interactions with that keyword because at the end of the day, we got to remember, how does Amazon make money? Uh, Amazon makes money uh, either from a click, you know, because they saw a sponsor that or Amazon makes money from a purchase. All right. So what they're trying to do is they want to show the products either in sponsored ads or organically as high as possible. The ones that give Amazon the best chance to make that money. And, and so how do they know what's going to give them the best chance of making money? It's it's who's made the money in the past for for that for those keywords. So that that's how they um, it kind of works. Yeah. And remember, when you're ranking, let's say you're one. <clears throat> excuse me. You're one of those people that have those 75 keywords in your ranking. And maybe a, a bunch of you are on page one. Well, nobody can force anybody to click your looking. If your listing sucks, nobody's going to click on it. So, uh, you know, check out that. We talk about the Brady Bunch effect. You know, take your competitors, make sure that your listing looks good, that your primary or your hero image looks the best, or stands out equal to or better than your competitors. Yep. Okay, next question. Does Helium 10 use also the keyword data from Google and other platforms, or is it only the search data inside Amazon? 
Well, if we're looking, if you're talking about like, you know, the search volume um, and things like that, you know, that's that's based on Amazon searches. Now, we do actually have Google data in in Helium 10. You know, that's in the Trendster app where where you can like kind of overlay Amazon BSR and then take a look at that keyword uh, of how it looks on Google Trends. So in that sense, yeah, we have some uh, Google data. OK, uh, Manny, can you explain in detail what the number in the CPR column in Cerebro refers to? Sure. So the CPR number is basically uh, a formula that Matt, your namesake, Manny Coates, uh, came <laughs> up with, you know, years ago uh, of when people were, were doing discounted purchases, uh, you know, based with two step URLs in order to get to page one, approximately how many of those discounted purchases over eight days you would need to give you the best chance to get to page one. Um, a lot of people are using full price buys you know, now and they're using rebates and different things like that. So it's it's the number that's actually needed is a lot less. And, uh, you, you know, you might be seeing you might be seeing a, a kind of big uh, update on, on that over the next couple couple of uh, months. I don't that's know if you heard about that Mike? first here on the lunch with uh, Norm. <laughs> All right. And uh, let's see. Fatiha, a keyword with 4,000 searches in, is my main keyword. Should it be targeting this word at launch or focus on smaller long tail keywords than move up? It depends. It depends. You know, this is something that Tim Jordan talked about in 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 when we did Project X. You know, he called going for that that big uh, keyword, the the storming the castle, and then he talked about the the those longer tail ones is like uh, storming the beach. You know, if you're if you're an invading army coming over water, you first go for the beach first, and then you storm the castle. Now. At the end of the day, there's no one answer that that answers everything. Um, it depends on if you think you can organically convert uh, once you get to page one. So, for example, if I was uh, if I was trying to do collagen peptides where everybody's got a million reviews, sure, I, I bet I can get to page one within one week, you know, using different launch methods. But I guarantee you, <laughs> I'm not going to stay on page one because. Once I get to page one, my listing is ugly compared to everything else, you know, with uh, a lot of reviews and a lot of history and things like that. I I'm going to fall off of page one because my conversion is going to be bad. But if you're in some kind of niche like we did with the coffin shelf, you know, with the coffin shelf, our main keyword was coffin shelf. It was like, you know, I don't know, 10,000 search volume at the time. We were absolutely just fine going after that right off the bat because we knew there were so few coffin shelves on there or, or the competition was so bad or their price was all like double hours or whatever that we knew without any, even any reviews. All we need to do is get to page one and we're going to get the organic conversions right away. So you got, you know, that might be the case with, with, with you, Fatih, or it might be something else. So you just got to take a look at the competition and then just ask yourself, hey, if I got to page one, would I convert? And here's the thing that you can do too. Don't, don't just go with what you think. Uh, you know, poll your family members if they don't know what your brand is. Like, hey, which of these would you get? Or do a pick food. You know, do a pick food. Just like take two of the, the you know, the or three of the top um, listings there on page one and then put like a, a thumbnail of yours without reviews and then say, hey, if you if you search for this keyword, which one of these would you buy and why? And then if 98 percent of people say the other ones and then they say because this one has no reviews and I would trust this one more or whatever, well then you know maybe you should wait to get some reviews before you make that push to get that one to page one. Great. Okay, awesome. Um, also, if you guys haven't done it yet, please like this video. And uh, yeah, if you did share the video, please uh, just comment done. Um, sometimes privacy settings, we can't see who actually shares the video. But once you do that, you'll get an extra two votes. Um, Let's see, this is from Gideon. Uh, what is your thought about the brand name in the title? Should it be in the end or in the beginning? Yeah, Amazon wants it in the beginning. So that's just like, you know, if you don't put it in there, it's not like an automatic suspension. If you put it at the end, it's not like an automatic suspension or suppression or anything like that. But I have seen more and more people get get slapped on the wrist by not putting it at the beginning. And what happens is, is they don't even get suppressed necessarily, but well, then Amazon goes in there and they change the title to what they want it to be, which is at the beginning. And then once they've done that, a lot of the time, now you can never change your title again. Like it, it's like a lock. They lock it. Yeah, they lock it. So like I all, for me, I always suggest putting it at the beginning. Very good. Okay, we're, we got a couple more still, but uh, is it advisable to have your own store on Amazon with few products? Yeah, I mean, if I only have one product, um, as you know, I'd still make a storefront. 
So if, if that's what you mean, like I would get brand registry so I can have a storefront. Um, it's going to give me some, you know, capabilities with other kinds of advertising on Amazon. And it gives me another URL that I can promote, you know, like that URL of your storefront will start getting indexed also in in, Am or in Amazon, in, in Google. And and you could send traffic, you know, uh, to their Amazon loves, you know, outside traffic. Remember, guys. So. So, yeah, I mean, whether I have uh, one product, three products or, or 20 products, if I've got brand registry, I, I will make a, a storefront for it. And by the way, when you're sending traffic over to your storefront, it's so much more attractive than just having hero graphic, you know, with a white background. Yeah. yeah, it looks so much better. Okay, this one, why, why Jungle Scout and Helium 10 have a huge difference in their sales estimates? Sometimes it can be more than 500%. Yeah, what I always say, I mean, I don't even care if Helium 10's in the conversation there, is never compare two tools because that's kind of like a meaningless comparison. You know, like Helium 10 is this, tool B is this. Tool C is this, tool A is this. The reason why I say that's a meaningless uh, conversation is what matters is is what tool A, X, Y, Z is compared to Amazon, all right? So if you don't have that one constant, there's no purpose comparing the two. I, the, the illustration I always use is weather stations. You know, <clears throat> if I don't know what the real weather was, you know, we can have Channel 10 always predicts that uh, or channel pretend uh, predicts X degrees uh, or that there's going to be rain, you know, uh, channel Y predicts this many degrees. Well, uh, the conversation of, oh, man, why is it so different? There's nothing beneficial that could be got out of that conversation, because if you don't know what actually did happen, you don't know which one was more accurate. So what 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 is the better conversation to have is, hey, how come uh, channel 10 uh you know, always says it's going to rain and every single day it doesn't rain. Well, well, that means that it's not very accurate. So I say just always just just pick one tool. You know, like I would never I don't care even if, if somebody has another tool, one of our competitors, don't get Helium 10 if you're going to keep keep with uh, with your own tool. Just stick with your own tool, because if you think that you, somehow you are. Are, are smarter than all of the, the data scientists that every single tool, including Helium 10 has, and that you've come up with a better way to estimate sales because I'm going to throw up this Chrome extension and I'm going to throw up this one. And I have this little formula that I do a, a mixture. No, I mean, if, if that was more accurate, I'm sure one of these tools would have done that. So never compare two tools, guys. If you have Amazon for your own self and you want to have like five tools and then you say, hey, I'm going to uh, compare my data with, with Amazon, that's what that's what matters. And um, and so that, that's my that's my advice there. Yeah, I, I like to add and I've had that question a lot, but I use a tool as guidance. So if I'm using like, let's say the Jungle Scout compared on its own, I'm looking at it as guidance, Helium 10 as guidance. So it gives me the opportunity to say, forget the, the volume, but I know that there's fairly good volume here, you know, if um, if I'm using the tool, but but that's all. Um, other than that, all the other functionalities of whatever tools that you're using, you know, that's taken into consideration. But I believe it's like listening to ten different gurus. You know, uh, you're going to get a little bit different angles of where you're coming from. So just Bradley, you're bang on. Pick a tool. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, from Nathan, uh, how would you discover keywords for a product you're repurposing? So, <clears throat> so then you got a product already. I'm assuming Nathan, you're talking about, and then now you want to like uh, maybe cross promote it into a different niche or something. Well, okay. So in that case, you know maybe the competitors aren't similar to yours, but still, if you think that you're relevant to a certain keyword um, or a certain niche. Uh, in this situation, yeah, I'd go ahead and analyze the the products that are performing for the that niche. You know, even if it's very different, you know, than my product, and yeah, I would be able to pull some some keywords from there. I actually suggest doing that, regardless. You know, even at the beginning, is is study the. Uh, I mean, the, the step A never changes. Is hey, the competitors who are most like yours. You know, you want to get those keywords, but then look at the frequently bought together. You know, Helium 10 and Black Box shows that you, you can enter in a, a ASIN in, in Black Box for uh, product targeting and you'll see the history 
of all the products in the last month that showed up as frequently bought together. And some of them are, are different, you know, like people aren't just, uh, you know, it's not like this pen is always going to be frequently bought together with this pen. No, it's, it's this pen is always going to be maybe frequently bought together with like a notebook or something. All right. So if you are making the pen, go ahead and do some keyword research on the notebook so that you can have some some keywords that convert for this and that'll help you know the relevancy to this niche but then also you might start getting ranked for some of these notebook keywords because guess what there's history that somebody who's searching for a notebook eventually they're going to buy a a pen anyways so if your pen starts coming up on these notebook searches either in ppc or organic you can get you know you can get a couple you're not going to you know retire off that but you can get a couple couple sales a week here or there from that relevancy mhm mm yeah all right, Cade or Hade. I'm getting old. That's my other son. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to get everyone in. Uh, okay. Okay. From Oleg, uh, what do you uh, type in the manufacturer tab when you're creating your listing? Brand name. So I put in the same uh, as the brand name because what happens is, you know, for, for any new listing, if you don't have brand registry, you know, you, you get that brand 5665 error. And then so, of course, the way around that is, you know, you got to put an N not applicable or N dash A or N slash A. Sometimes different things work. But if you put in the manufacturer your brand name, even during this one, two, three week process that it takes you to get that brand approved, uh, your brand will show up. So it doesn't say N A, N -A on the actual Amazon listing. So even though you might have brand blank or you might have N A, but the brand will still show up as long as you have it right there in the manufacturer uh, section. Okay. And let's see, next stuff. In Cerebro and Magnet, could it be possible to aggregate the search volume of, say, the most relevant keywords or the ones we select? Yeah, so you can do that. Uh, that was a, a recent feature in, in uh, not in Cerebro, but you can do it from Cerebro, it, is you can put up to 200 um keywords into magnet so you could do that right there in magnet you just select it and then make a new search or pull the keywords from cerebro and and send it into magnet but you you put 200 keywords there uh with a comma on, on each space and you can do that you don't have to put a comma every time put that into frankenstein the keyword processor in helium 10 and then just hit this button that says add a comma to, to every keyword so you, you know uh, it, you can do that in three seconds put it into magnet and boom it'll show the aggregated uh, uh search volume right there Okay, and let's see. Uh, what would be your preferred time frame for doing a listing audit and changing keywords? Three, four, or six months? Uh, it depends. Sometimes, you know, on the niche. Like, like if something's brand new, I, I'd maybe look at it even every two months. You know, because it, it changes so much. But if it's something like you know, a silicone spatula or something. Um, you know, I highly doubt the trends of, of what people search for is going to change over time. So I might. I might go to the other extreme and maybe just take a look at it every six, seven months. Do you remember the days of silicone spatula? I, I remember it, it was like people don't talk about it anymore as, as being cliche, but back in the day, that was that was the collagen peptides that everybody would use. <laughs> yeah, that's the exactly spatula. what it was. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when is your next, uh, your new Project X coming out? Funny you mentioned that. We actually just had an internal meeting less than 24 hours ago uh, at, at Helium 10 and and it would have come out already or we would have done something, but all of the plans that we had uh, were kind of messed up by COVID. You know, like, like we we had some ideas where we were going to like go to people's houses and, and, and different things like that. And, 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 you know, you haven't been able to really do that you know, in the last uh, year. So we came up with something that even though, you know, we're still a few months away from, from maybe uh, normalcy, like, you know, like this is my house. This is not the office. Uh, I recreated the office here at my house with the same background and stuff. But once we get back into the office, it's probably, I don't know, end of the summer or something. But but we're going to start on something soon uh, for the next Project X. Bradley, you can say it. It was Tim. He was late. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's I, all I, on I, Tim. I had a cover for him, but uh, <laughs> okay. you, you let the cat out of the bag. Uh, Okay, and uh, is it possible to record your clubhouse with Kevin King and send it to Helium 10 members? It's a good question. Um, I, I remember before in the TOS of Clubhouse, it had said that you can't record, but I see that people do it just fine. So, like, I, I might have to, I might look into that. It's a good idea. Yeah, the the terms are if you have anybody talking, 
you have mm-hmm. to get their permission to talk. So when they bring ah. them up, you can just say, hey, you are going to be recorded. Do you agree? And they say yes. Now it's okay. You're, you're okay. absolutely okay to uh, record on Clubhouse. Cool. I think I can do it because I've got this road roadcaster thing here yep. where it can record. Um, I've never tried it before, but I know it has that function. So, okay. Not a bad idea. If you want, by the way, just going down a different rabbit hole, contact uh, Paul, uh, you know, Paul Barron. Oh, yeah, yeah. Paul is one of yeah. the ones I know who records them like that. And that's what got me thinking, like, maybe it is okay. Um, yeah, so he, he's he got a it. video he sent over to me to do it. So, uh, yeah. Do you have the road or what are you using? No, um, I have nothing. <laughs> but, but you're able I, to record, so. I, 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 well, what I'm doing, I'll tell you, if people are interested in recording Clubhouse right now, I have something called Recordcaster or something like that, where, like, Paul's got this, you know, it's $1,000 for that Rode Ma- Master Pro, right? Um, so I went and I got this thing at $3 a month. And as long as I'm recording and as long as I tell people I'm recording, I turn on Record Mask. And th- the difference was it, with some of these apps is that your voice levels are different. This is perfect. Ah. It's perfect. So um, I have to test it out a bit more, but I will. I'll send it over to you, by the way, like the app that I'm using, and it's it's nothing. Paul's got a very complicated way of doing it, and it works perfectly. I think that this might not be at podcast level, uh-huh. but it's acceptable right now. So I, w- I was just looking at buying that Roadmaster. Like Hayden does all the mixing for the podcast for us. So I'm not exactly sure how he You know, mixes. you just gave me an idea, um, too, and, and Facebook user uh, here. I, I always, I, when I always use StreamYard, too, I make fun of like, come on, guys, don't be so, don't be so shy. Click that link so that we can see your name. But uh, anyways, Facebook user. See, now, now I don't have to give Facebook user credit for, for this idea because I don't even know he, who he or she is. But, but um, that could be an interesting, like, if I were to add, like, a, a third podcast of the week for the Serious Sellers podcast, it would be like a recording of... Um, Clubhouse. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. There you go. Thank you, Facebook user. We do a bonus episode on uh, Mondays for Clubhouse. And then, right. That's yeah, what we we're doing. We haven't really recorded and posted them well, but yeah. Um, oh, so you, you, you guys are doing that. Yeah. Uh, visit- oh, cool. We we haven't uploaded any of like the Clubhouse stuff yet, but um, we're, we're just uh, doing Clubhouse Extra as like a bonus episode. On Mondays at one thirty. If you ever want to join us, Bradley, you're happy to join us at one thirty. Oh. <laughs> send, send me um, send me like um, like a calendar invite. Otherwise, I I know I'll forget that. That's how Paul gets me into his uh, every week is because it pops up my my calendar. So I'm like, oh, I better hop on the clubhouse. Very good. Yeah, I could do that. All right. And uh, do you have any plans? So this one is for the UK, but there's also one for Australia. Do you have any plans of uh, Helium ten, 10 team visiting the UK? Absolutely. You know, I, I'm sure this has got Norm too, but but Norm knows how much I like to travel and, and we'd always see each other in different events and things. And man, this last year has been rough. So uh, currently, as long as I, I mean, not now it looks like we might be able to get vaccinated by the end of May. But um, my plans for this year, I'm going back to the Maldives again, this this time with my, my, my family. But um, I'm doing Japan this year, uh, definitely doing Europe. I'm doing Pakistan uh, as well. Uh, Beyond that, we'll see. But but Europe for sure. And if I ever go to Europe, I always make a stop in the UK. So we'll definitely do a, uh, you know, there's lunch with Norm. We'll have lunch with Bradley, but like physically in a in an actual place for sure this year. I wish. I just had to, I got to say this because I just put it in the Centurion group and I know there's a bunch of listening, but I just had to give up. I paid with Dave Kettner a full, we, did, we were going to do an Amazon Live event. I can't go to Mexico. I can't get my money back. So I'm just giving away a vacation to whoever wants to go. Like wow. everything's paid, all food, all everything. And I haven't been able to get get, get a taker. So I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, would you? Uh, I can go to Mexico. Like, um, is it because you're Canadian? Yeah, I can't get across the border. Interesting. Yeah, I oh. uh, like I, I went to... Um, I've only gone once because I had to go to a pharmacy to nothing illegal, you know, guys. But <laughs> there's this one you guys know is I have bad skin. So, like, I had to go to the, get this one medication, but I just walk right across the border. It was, it was fine. You know, I can you can walk into the airport right there. They, they don't really check. But, uh, yeah, I know, I, know, I know things are a little bit tougher for you guys up there. Yeah. Up I'm in, yeah just to go off topic for a sec, I'm in lockdown. 
I'm in hundred. Oh, really? Wow. I'm in lockdown. Wow. Yeah. I thought we had it bad here. Like San Diego, it, it, they've been saying it's like the worst. Like we just got like outdoor dining <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, you know, uh, and, and where everybody else, you know, you got states like Texas and, and and other places that are almost completely open. But I thought we had it bad here in California. But I guess you got it worse up there. Oh, man. Yeah, a little bit. Okay, next question. Let's go. So if uh, we need to get going at all. Oh yeah, Bradley. It's past one o'clock. I'm good. Like like nine times out of ten, I, I have hard uh, cutoffs. But today, um, I had cleared my schedule uh, pretty much. Not not. I, I can't say it's for, was it for because you, Norm, of lunch with Norm. I had a real <laughs> rough week this week. Like, uh, there, did you speak at the billion dollar summit too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like that actually is the most nerve wracking one uh, for me. You know, I, I obviously speak at you know what. 85 events a year or podcasts or different things. And I just hop on here like this and it's, it's great, you know, and everything because uh, I love interacting with people, but there it's like, I get intimidated because I'm like, good grief. These are like, you know, people like Norm, $50 million sellers and hundred million dollar <laughs> sellers and stuff. And like, I really got to be on my game. So like I, uh, I, until last night I, I woke up like, like three minutes before I came on here and I slept like 12 hours because I got a total of like five hours sleep the whole week. So I was like, you know, I'm clearing my schedule Friday. So I can detox. So you, we can go up to ten thirty if you wanted to. Very good. So there's plenty of other questions. <laughs> All right. From Alina, uh, hi Bradley, hello Norm. What are your thoughts on how uh, to make a keyword selection for a totally new product, which does not exist on Amazon, but we know that there is demand because the product combines usages of more existing products. Well, did Alina speak at the Billion Dollar Summit too? I don't know if she did because it was. I don't know if you you were in uh, the the con the the thing yesterday, where um it was the hacks or something. Mm -hmm. that was the hacks, and then I I kept hearing uh Kevin say, "Hey, Alina, come up to the stage," and she never uh, came up, so I wasn't sure if it was that Alina. Anyways, uh. um, let's see. What are your thoughts on how to make a keyword selection for a totally new product which does not exist, but we know there's demand. So if I I do the same exact thing, but I just have to double it now. So. You know, let's say there's two products that I'm kind of combining, you know, well, theoretically speaking, uh, I'm going to do the keyword research on product A and I'm going to do the same thing on, on this whole product B and kind of like pick the best out of both. But this is assuming I've done the research to make sure there's demand for it. So like in cases like this, uh, this doesn't have to do with keyword research. This is more product research. This is where I especially use the Tim Jordan method of doing those PPC test listings where I'm like, hey, if I'm creating something new where I, all the indicators are there. My gut feeling is there that this is going to be good. I still don't want to do that um, that assumption that I'm going to crush it. So what I'll do is I'll you know make that combination, set it up there with a PPC test listing, and then see if I can get impressions and things from it. And then if so, then I'll go ahead and, and move forward with it. What happens? Let's say that, and and I've seen this recently, where you see a Dragon Dens product or Dragon Dens Canadian for Shark Tank. So you know you've got this really incredible product that's that's there that you know you can make it happen, but there's nothing in existence. Squatty Potty. All of a sudden, mm -hmm. Squatty Potty comes out. It would, it, there was no, it didn't exist before. What would you do for some, or what advice would you give to somebody if they had a unique product that could be in demand, but nobody knows about it? Yeah, well, the thing is, is, you know, I have always said that before. Hey, you know, uh, Amazon isn't. Um, what's those websites? What, what's those crowdsourcing websites uh, that's escaping my my mind? Where, um, where where you have this idea and then everybody hops in and and pitches in. Oh my goodness! GoFundMe. Yeah, not GoFundMe. Um, Quick, uh, oh there's mean. two of those. There's two main ones. Indiegogo. Kickstarter. Indiegogo Kickstarter. is one. Yeah, yeah Kickstarter. That's not the main one. Oh, Kickstarter. Yeah, Kickstarter. Yeah. yeah. So I always say, hey, Amazon. I mean, Amazon actually has its own kind of Kickstarter program. Um, yeah. But but the regular Amazon is not that. So you absolutely can go viral with a brand new product. And even if you start on Amazon, but it's not going to come from Amazon necessarily. You have to have a way to drive traffic there because the Amazon starts with search searches. And if there's zero search volume for any of the keywords that would come up, you've got to either A, get at the top of searches that maybe aren't related to your product, but it's just a matter of people seeing it and they're going to like it. You know, that's one path. Or B, you've got to drive that traffic from off of Amazon. So like, don't think of Amazon as a Kickstarter. You, you could use it to kickstart your product, 
but you still have to be able to do A or B. In other words, send this outside traffic to get eyeballs on this product or get on the top of keyword searches that might not be too relevant to, to your to your thing because the, it's a brand new thing. So how can it be very relevant? But you think that the avatar of the customers who shop on those keywords, all they have to do is see your product and they'll be like, ooh, I want that. Well, you got to do one of those two things. Nice. Okay, Kels. Okay, this is from Gideon. Uh, what kind of keywords uh, should you put inside the EBC images? Should I repeat the keywords I have on my list or should I add some new keywords which I don't have on a list? It depends. You know, like, like I said, in the beginning of listings, I like repeating. Uh, I like repeating keywords just to just to give it that much more oomph. But uh, if I and for me, um, uh, like I said, all the products that I launched last year were all these like stuff. I ha hardly have any competition. And usually when when it's a matter of that, there's hardly any keywords. There's like there's only there's only so many keywords that could drive a sale to a coffin shelf. <laughs> you, you know, it, it's like it's not like, oh, man, I have no space. I only got five bullet points and a thousand characters in description and 250 in my search terms. It's not enough. No, I mean, that's more than enough of what I need to get indexed for all the keywords. But if I was in the more competitive niches, yeah, um, I, I would use that for more uh, for more real estate, not the duplication, but rather just to get even index, you know. That I would use uh, almost as, you know, sometimes maybe some of the even Spanish, you know, keywords, you know, mm -hmm. you could put into it, uh, you know, the stuff that you don't want in your regular listing. Yeah, we've seen where uh, and we do put a Spanish bullet point as our fifth bullet point. Oh, really? Cool. Yep. OK, uh, from Peter, what does it mean when a certain product category on a black box does not show any sales or revenue numbers? Yeah, so that's usually either one of two things. Either A, there's no BSR. And we see more and more of that. You know, three years ago, almost everything had BSR from Amazon. But nowadays, you'll see whole entire categories that don't have a parent or a, a top-level BSR. The reason? I have no idea. You'd have to ask Amazon about that. So if there's no BSR history, we can't, you know, show an estimation because that's what we're using for our, our estimations. The other thing um, is that if, if the BSR is unstable, like if it just changed categories or something, or we see some huge spike or some huge dip where it's like, hmm, this seems kind of fishy. Like either Amazon made an error or maybe it just uh, it just uh, changed categories or whatever the case is, we'll, we'll blacklist that product from giving a sales estimation because we'd rather not give you a sales estimation than, than put something that's wrong. Um, so th those are the two cases. Okay. And uh, what is the average number of products per brand you've seen from your experience? I love that name, Doctor Cause Forensic Detectors. You know, when it's Facebook, it's always somebody's name. But when we get these YouTube live, we, we always get some fun, uh, some fun uh, handles. <laughs> there. Oh yeah, and his products are incredible. Cool, I love it. Um, I don't know. I've never, I've never taken a look at that. You know, uh, it, I don't. I don't even know if you could come up with a number. You've got some brands that you know because of variations and everything else. You know, that's got two thousand, you know, uh, products, and then you've got another guy who might be just as successful with only five. So. So I've never taken a look to see the the average. So you, I, I would say don't, you know, if somebody's just starting out, you know, don't don't cap yourself. Like say, up, oh, I want to get up to 20 or I want to get to 30 and then I'm good for this brand. No, I mean, if you've got a brand that has wide appeal and then you can do a variety of products, just keep going, you know, j j just keep going. I mean, the Manny's Mysterious Oddities for Coffin Shelf, uh, just for fun, I, I'm launching some other stuff there. Um, oh man, I don't know if I should say it. No, I'm not gonna say it. Okay, there, okay. There's a new product, guys, that we're we're gonna put on the the Manny's Mysterious Oddities. That's hilarious. All right, it's hilarious. Um, one one product I I will say that we are adding to it is I'm uh in developing right now a large coffin shelf. So like I, I'm creating a large coffin shelf. We created this year a pink coffin shelf, uh, a purple one. So like you know I could go. To infinity with that brand as far as spooky spooky things so like don't limit yourself uh don't don't target a certain number just do what feels right for your brand uh let's see this is from jnr is it advisable to do comp uh, competitor keyword search individual or do a group search i do both always and, and you can actually do that from the same search with these new filters that we have. So if you're doing it in Cerebro, I always like picking five, six, seven different competitors. Uh, but there's a way to do that. There, we have something called advanced filters at the very bottom that not many people know about. And then what you can do is you can say, hey, show me one where maximum one, maximum one of these competitors 
is ranked for in the top 10 or something like that. And so it's almost like you're doing an individual search. So I would say always start with the group to see what the, 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 the best keywords are for, for the entire group, but then take it on an individual level using those filters so that you can see maybe there's a keyword that just one of uh, that, that just one of those competitors are really doing well for, but the others aren't. Okay, I think we can honestly keep going forever. So yeah, uh, so we'll we'll let's what's there now. We'll we'll just Daniel keep says that. I think I know that. No, it's not that I didn't do it. This one for that exact reason. For this exact reason, um, we do do test listings on 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 there, and, and almost all those test listings we're, we're 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 doing like like there's some egg there's some egg shelf products that we did a test listing just because I wanted to record an episode of Project X and and we got on or on order. But there's this one that was that's going to be so funny. Um, that I was like, you know what? There's too many people like Daniel watching our Tesla listings. I can't even do a Tesla list for this. I'm just gonna launch it. So no, you, you got the wrong one, Dan. <laughs> okay. So do you want to put a cap? Like uh, three more questions? Is it yeah. Why don't we put a cap? It's the uh, three more questions. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is from Norman. Uh, I'm reviving an old listing with new variations and selling out the old variations. What's my best title and keyword strategy um, to go with all the new research? Selling out the old variations. Well, it, it depends on on how similar it is. You know, like like if it's just uh, if this variation is is just like a multiple, like it's a quantity thing, or if it's a colored thing. I mean, it depends on what what kind of variation you know you're talking about. But but look what worked. If you think that the the keywords that people would have searched for your ones you're phasing out are the same as your new ones, well then you got to look back at your your history. You know, either through brand analytics or or even through your keyword tracker. And and see which ones were converting there, and just trans transfer transfer those to to your new listings. Now, if those new ones are are hitting some certain features that those others didn't, well, instead of looking at your internal uh, keyword history, look at the other competitors who have something similar to there, and then pull in pull in those keywords. So it's it's probably going to be a combination of both of those. Okay, number two. Uh, what should the volume from a niche long tail keywords to include in your listing? That that that's different, you know. Uh, in a lot of categories, you take something small like the coffin shelf, and and if you have something that's like three hundred search volume, hey, that that's that's decent, you know. That, that's still probably top one hundred <laughs> keywords because it's such a small thing. Now you have a silicone spatula or, or co collagen peptides, you know, a three hundred search volume might not even be worth worth it, you know. Like uh, you you'd you'd be lucky just to be able to get all the one thousand search volume. And so there's no like magic number. It's just like you've got to rank it. You, you got to rank them all, you know, just be more mindful of, of relevancy to your niche as opposed to that, that number. Um, because if it's super relevant, uh, maybe the number is not high now, but it might go higher later. So, so go by relevancy instead of just the raw number. Okay. And the last one, pick someone who hasn't, done before has the last one i like uh, okay. nicholas i like to export cerebro's result to work on it in excel i can't re-import a keyword list back into cerebro at a later date to see the sv and the ranking of a handful of competitors any updates coming well you know we have the uh you know my list for for keywords so you absolutely can do that so even before you get it to excel or even after you would just import uh you'd want to import this you know block of keywords or whatever to your list it's called the my list in keywords it's the the link is at the bottom left of your menu and and you'll have that entire history there until you delete it so you you could have lists of a thousand keywords a list of 100 keywords a list of 10 keywords different folders and all that so that's that's what you should do all right and uh, that was the last question kels cool. Yeah, I think that's the last one we can we should do. Perfect. So. Yeah, we can go on forever. All right. So why don't we get over to the wheel of Kelsey? Okay, let's do it. So just give me a second. There it is. Okay, we got lots lots of entries. I think this was Ooh, our there. ever. So here we go for a free one on one consultation with Bradley. This is pretty go. cool. Three, two, one. Usually Kelsey sings a you know the Jeopardy tune. Uh, 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 who won? Oleg. Oleg. Oh, there we go. You got to send me this app. That's a pretty cool. I, I got to do that on uh, one of the lives. That is awesome. 
Yeah, it's just a if you just search up Wheel of Names, it's there. Wheel of Names. Uh, Wheel of, of Names. Well, Wheel of Kelsey, of course. Wheel. All right. Of names. Yeah, that's what he was supposed to do. Okay, so Oleg, congratulations. That's a great prize. Bradley, as you're taking that usually happens only to me when I'm at a restaurant. I'm just in the middle of uh, you know, a drink or I'm chewing something, the server comes up and says, Well, can I <laughs> so uh, how do people or how like what's going on? I know you've got a ton of stuff going on. How do people contact or watch what you're doing? Yeah. Um, I mean, I usually announce, uh, you know, different things and uh, that, that I'm doing on my Instagram. So you can yep. follow me at H10 Bradley, H10 Bradley. But um, yeah, I mean, if you guys are already Helium 10 members, I'm sure if we have something big coming, you know, you, you'll get a you'll get an email. But but. I always put fun stuff on my Instagram, so that's that's a great place to uh, to find me there. All right, fantastic. Okay, sir, thank you for man. We uh, we went yeah an extra twenty minutes. I really appreciate you taking your time, and I hope you can come back to the podcast. Sure, anytime. All right, Bradley, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. All right, everybody. So thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I hope you got something out of this. I think you know there was just a lot of information to help with uh, with your to improve your listings and keyword research. So Kelsey, great stuff. Congratulations, Olaf. 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 That's also frozen. <laughs> but uh, send me over an email at k at lunchwithnorm.com and we'll set you up with Bradley. Um, Thanks, everyone. I love uh, the support everyone's giving Oleg right now. Uh, it's always <laughs> great to see in our community. Uh, and thank you guys for watching. It was a great episode. Um, if you're catching the tail end of this, you can always go over to the YouTube channel. All those episodes go over there. You can watch the whole thing there. And yeah, let us know um, in our Facebook group if you have any suggestions, if you have any topics, if you want to share a funny meme. Um, that's your place to do it. And uh, we're looking to build this community with you guys. Um, so yeah, make it make it your own. Um, we want this to be a special place too. So that's Lunch with Norm, Amazon FBA and E-Commerce Collective. And uh, I think that's it. Check out okay. our posts on Mondays, uh, 1.30 p.m. Eastern time. They go for anywhere from like an hour to an hour and a half. But we're trying to upload it at some time too. So, and this All right. podcast suck, that's right. <laughs> okay, so just uh, to, to let you know that on Monday, we've got an incredible topic that a lot of, well, I don't hear it being talked about a lot. We're going to have Michelle Love from Emford, E.M. Ford uh, Insurance come on and talk about different types of insurance for Amazon sellers what you need, what you don't need. Anyways, a lot of people will contact us about types of insurance that you need to sell on Amazon. Get this, Amazon is enforcing the insurance rule. If you're selling on Amazon, you need to have insurance. If you get a letter from Amazon saying, please provide us with your insurance, you have 30 days to do it or your, uh, your product is suspended. Anyways, we're going to go through all of that on Monday. I think it's going to be a really good podcast. But until that time, we will see you every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at noon Eastern Standard Time. Thank you, everybody, for watching today. Thank you for being part of the community. And have an incredible weekend. Lunch with the, lunch with the, lunch with the.